Welcome to Sporty's IFR Insight Series, getting the most from your instrument rating. I'm Spencer Suderman. Some of you may remember me from the Sporty's Advanced Pilot Skills Series. In this episode, we're going to fly an ILS approach into Jacksonville International, a busy commercial airport that over 7 million passengers pass through every year. This approach was flown in VFR conditions, so you can easily visualize what is happening. The video starts with a complete approach briefing, however, if you want to go directly to the in-flight action, just click ahead. In ForeFlight, tap on the Flight Plan button, then start typing the identifiers for the departure and arrival airports, and ForeFlight draws a direct course on the map. Then tap the Procedure button, then select the Approach button to bring up the Approaches tab, then select ILS Yankee Runway 8 to bring up the transitions. I'll select Vectors to Final, and this makes sense, since after takeoff, Approach Control will vector me to the final approach course, then tap Add to Route. Now the entire flight is shown on the map screen with the approach plate overlaid. Another tap to the Flight Plan button to close the screen, then pinch zoom the approach plate to full screen. Now let's brief the approach top to bottom and left to right. First we check the date to ensure the approach plate is current. Next, we check the location. This is Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville International, ILS, Yankee, Runway 8. Notice the final approach course is 77 degrees. The runway length for landing is 10,000 feet, which is plenty for a Cessna 172. The touchdown zone elevation is 30 feet. Moving down to the notes, we see a T in a black triangle, which means there are IFR takeoff minimums and or departure procedures in Section L of the Terminal Procedures publication. Since today's flight will be conducted as a practice approach under VFR, this is of no concern. There's also an A in a triangle, which means there are alternate minimums, which apply when using this airport and approach as an alternate when filing an IFR flight plan. Again, since this flight will be a practice approach conducted under VFR, this is not a factor. The next box is the Runway Approach Lighting System, which is ALSF2, High Intensity Approach Lighting System with Sequenced Flashing Lights. The last box on this row is the Mist Approach Procedure. All Mist Approaches start with a climb, and this one is to 1,000 feet straight ahead, then a climbing turn left to 3,000 feet on a 250 degree heading and on the Craig Vortac Radial 290 to Mania Intersection, which is also 29.2 DME on the radial then hold. This is depicted on the left side of the plan view. Moving down to the next row with the frequencies in the order they are needed. First you get the ATIS, then talk to approach for the clearance and advisories, then get handed off to tower for landing. The plan view section is next, and this is a top-down look at the approach. One of my favorite things about ForeFlight and this graphical overlay is how easy it is to understand the flight path throughout the entire approach. The magenta line is our arrival from the southeast to the final approach course somewhere outside of the glide slope intercept, which occurs at Dennis at 1,900 feet. When vectored to an ILS by ATC, they will get you lined up on the localizer at the appropriate altitude well before the glide slope intercept. Once you have the localizer and glide slope captured on your instruments, just follow them down to the runway. The next section is the profile view which has the same information as the plan view just presented looking at the airplane from the side as it flies the approach. Distances for each segment are shown at the bottom and improves situational awareness for comparison to the GPS distance on the primary flight display. The bottom section shows the minimums for the different versions of the approach. We'll be flying a Cessna 172 in the approach at under 90 knots, so that puts us in category A. The decision altitude is 230 feet, and the visibility requirement is 1,800 feet runway visual range, which is just a little more than one quarter mile. We must start a missed approach if the runway environment is not in sight when we reach that altitude or don't have the minimum visibility. Now let's go to the run-up area at Craig Airport. After going through the checklist, all that's left to do is set up the G1000 for the flight. First, the comm radios. Tower is already on standby in COM1, so tap the flip-flop button to make it active, then dial in Jack's approach on standby. Tap the little knob so the green box moves down to COM2, then dial in ASOS for Jack's International on standby. I don't need to manually tune the nav radios because the G1000 will do that for me when I load an approach. Next, hit the flight plan button and notice that Craig Airport is already entered because the GPS knows where we are. Just tap the enter button to accept it and the cursor moves down. 
Then use the little knob to start entering the next waypoint and the window opens up. Since the first field already has a K, use the big knob to scroll to the next letter, then the little knob to select J, then big knob to move the cursor, then little knob to select A, and keep going until you're done. Then tap Enter to accept the flight plan, and notice the Direct 2 indication with distance and bearing in the top status bar, and the HSI is active. Now tap the PROC button to bring up the procedures. Notice Select Approach is already highlighted, so tap Enter. ILS Yankee Runway 8 is at the top of the list and already highlighted, so just tap Enter to accept, which brings up the Transitions menu. Vectors is at the top and already highlighted, so just tap Enter to accept. Back on the Select Approach screen, the Minimums field is highlighted. Turn the little knob to select Barrow, then the big knob to move the cursor, then the little knob to dial in 230 feet, which you can get from the approach plate. Then tap Enter to accept and the warning screen appears because this is an ILS approach using ground-based radios, so the G1000 is reminding you that GPS functionality is for situational awareness only during the approach. Tap Enter again to load the approach onto the end of the flight plan, and notice the nav radios are now configured with the localizer frequency. The G1000 is ready to go. Now let's go up to 3,000 feet, heading northwest over Jacksonville, Florida, about to check in with ATC after departing Craig Airport VFR. Jacksonville approach, Cessna 814 Mike Victor off Craig Airport request. He was just off of Craig with the request. Approach, uh, Cessna 814 Mike Victor off Craig, almost over uh, Navy Jacks. I have information Zulu for Jackson International. I'd like to get a practice ILS runway. A14 Mike Victor, squad 0424. Squad 0424, A14 Mike Victor. Mike Victor, which type aircraft again? Cessna 172 slant Golf. You want four, Mike Victor. Roger, and uh, what are your intentions on the go? On the go, VFR, back to Craig Airport. Four, Mike Victor, Roger, and uh, when you're ready, fly heading of uh, 300. Turn, heading 300 for one four, Mike Victor. Autopilot's flying the airplane, helping me out with workload. Uh, four Mike Victor, traffic up ahead, 12 o'clock, three miles maneuvering, indicating 3,000. Looking for traffic, four Mike Victor. Freeway 880, contact approach 127.0, good day. Freeway 814 Four Mike Victor has traffic, my one o'clock about my altitude, is that who I'm looking for? Four Mike Victor, eight permanent, turn 15 degrees right, we're gonna go behind him. 15 degrees to the right, Four Mike Victor. Okay, we're starting to get close. Number eight one, Four Mike Victor, turn right, heading 350, start your descent. Turn right, heading 350, start a descent. Eight one, Four Mike Victor. At this point in the flight, ATC is vectoring me to the final approach course to ensure a localizer and glide slope intercept. However, I'm waiting for the approach clearance to activate it in the G1000. The GPS is still showing a course direct to the airport as entered into the flight plan. The key takeaway here is when you load an approach, it's simply added to the end of the flight plan. When the approach is activated with an initial approach fix, the GPS computes a direct course to that fix. If vectors to final is activated, the G1000 no longer provides direct guidance and is waiting for the pilot to fly the plane close enough to the final approach course so the CDI can be used. Watch the G1000 screen carefully because you are about to see how automation reduces pilot workload. Looking at the screen, you can see the GPS Direct 2 indication showing JAX is 11 miles away on a bearing of 52 degrees. The CDI needle confirms with an indication that the course is to the northeast of my position. The G1000 is about to automatically activate the approach in vectors to final mode as entered and switch the CDI source from GPS to localizer. When the approach was activated, automation did four important things. The localizer frequency switched to active in NAV1 and IJAX appeared because the G1000 listened to the Morse code identifier and confirmed the source. VTF mode appeared in the top navigation status bar. The CDI was switched from GPS in magenta to localizer mode in green on the HSI and set itself to the final approach course of 77 degrees as shown on the approach plate. If this were an older mechanical CDI, you would have to set that manually. The glide slope box appears to the left of the altimeter, 
with a green diamond to indicate it's an ILS glide slope versus a GPS glide path on an RNAV approach. Most G1000 flight decks have ILS CDI auto switching capability that activates when a set of parameters are met. This can be disabled from the system setup page for ILS CDI capture. It will put in 500 feet a minute. Rich in the mixture, we're coming out at 3,000 feet. We're getting set up to intercept the localizer. I'd run my pre landing checklist. Check the approach, money 201, Charlie Wicks. Landing uh, light on. Money 201, Charlie Wicks. Your best approach. power. Fuel valve both. Flaps is required. I'm going to get the airplane slowed down. Which speed? Armin has set itself up. It's in localizer mode. Remember, localizer is much narrower than a VOR. Our pilot set to level us off at 2000. About to intercept the localizer. I'm looking for the needle. The plane is configured for the approach. November 814, Mike Victor, four miles from Dens, turn right heading 050, maintain 2000, still established, clear to ILS runway 8 approach. Turn right heading 050, maintain 2000, till established, clear ILS runway 08 approach. 814, Mike Victor. I've been using heading and altitude mode on the autopilot to fly the ATC vectors, but now that I have the final vector, I'm going to arm approach mode. November 1271, Bravo, contact Jack Center, 127.57. 127. Okay, looking good on the autopilot. Localizer's coming in nicely. Yeah, I thought it was going to blow past. It's turning us towards it. We're good. November 7355, I got one fix to put in your flight plan after Ocala advise ready to copy. Starting to have the glide slope coming in. I just have to manage power. Romeo Zulu Echo. Keep us at 90 knots. Direct wavelength, then it's filed. I've got glide slope armed on the autopilot. Memory 814 Mike Victor, contact Tower 118.3. Contact Tower 118.3, 814 Mike Victor. See you later. See ya. There we go. Glide slope's coming in. I'm going to start pulling the power out. Make sure the plane follows it. Jack Tower, Cessna 814, Mike Victor on the ILS runway. Near 814, Mike Victor, Jack Tower, 8, clear to approach. Clear for the approach, 814, Mike Victor. Hey, your request in favor, can you turn the approach lights on for me? I'm doing a lesson here, I'd like to see them. Just approach lights. You're on step one. You go all the way up, I have five steps. Roger that, thank you, appreciate the help. 814, Mike Victor. The autopilot will keep the glide slope where it's supposed to be, it'll keep the localizer needle where it's supposed to be. Remember, it's a lot narrower than a VOR. Ah, there's the approach lights. Look at that. Beautiful. I see the approach lights beautifully. Thank you, Tower 4, Mike Victor. American 1326, check. Tower, you ready to go? Hey, American 1326, traffic's on a three mile final. Fly runway heading, runway 8, clear for takeoff. Runway heading, clear for takeoff, runway 8, American 1326. North 4, Mike Victor, cautionary turbulence, Airbus departure prior to your arrival. And did you want the uh, light still up? Yeah, if you don't mind leaving the lights, I'd like to see them as I get closer for my student. Thank you. No problem. We've got an Airbus taking off ahead of us. Autopilot's doing a beautiful job holding the glide slope, holding the localizer. On ILS, if you can see the approach lights. If you're at minimums, you can see the approach lights. You can descend to 100 feet of, above the touchdown zone. In this case, touchdown zone's 30 feet. Down another 100 feet, keep looking for the runway. Most Cessna 172s, if you're flying 90 knots, three degree glide slope, Works out to about 450 to 500 feet a minute. They were at 520 feet. Autopilot's doing a beautiful job today. Look at that. Very, look at the autopilot, making little corrections. And visually, I can see it. 420 feet. Good for 230. 380. 360. Hundred feet, looking for 230, 280, 60. I see the approach lights. 240. Not available. Minimum. Connect the autopilot. I'm flying manual. 230. I'm at minimum. I can go down another 100 feet. 130. Looking for the runway. Do have the runway in sight. And if this were an actual, I could go ahead and continue the descent. Executing the missed approach. One more, right, Victor. Thanks for riding along, and I hope this flight gave you a feel for what instrument flying is all about. 
To take the next step, check out Sporty's instrument rating course, which includes 13 hours of in-flight HD cross-country and instrument approach video training and comprehensive written test preparation tools. You can learn more about the course, as well as find a large collection of new articles, videos, quizzes, and podcasts, all geared towards IFR flying at sporties.com slash IFR. And if you're like me from a few years ago, these resources are a great way to get current too if you have an instrument rating and are out of practice. Fly safe.